Morning everybody, it's Claire again. Hello to YouTube and every and the fellow Luna lovers. This is going to be the first stage of the sew along really um, for making a Luna or one of the other characters and this is going to be for machine sewing your friend really, your new friend. Um, you can use any of the three books. There's this one um, is the first book, Making Luna Lapin. Um, the second one, Luna Lapin's Friends. The third one, Making New Friends, and it's my understanding that there's a new book as well in production at the moment that's just, just waiting for release, so that one will be available as well. The pattern for Luna the Rabbit, who is the main character here, is in each of these books, so you don't need to purchase one book for Luna and then the rest for the other characters, she's actually in all of them. Um, and before we start the sew along, I just wanted to say that you can hand sew Luna and there are some very beautiful Lunas that have been hand sewn by um, our friends over at the Cool Crafting website um, and also the Facebook group as well that's available, Luna Lapin and Friends. You should be able to find that if you do a quick search on Facebook and there's a lot of members in there who are very active and it's great fun seeing what everybody makes. Um, but this one, this um, sew along really is more for people who, like me, prefer to machine sew their Lunas um, and I get there's merits of both so it, this isn't a criticism at all on on anybody it's just just my preference and i thought that people might like to see my process because one of my videos now for so in the ears into luna's head has had about three thousand views which is absolutely phenomenal really so there's of some interest and i thought well that actually then let's let's help people along with that and the comments have been good so hopefully they'll continue to be good so get yourself a book, that's what you need to do first off, because at the back of the book, if I just show you on this one, I'll do a quick flick, there's the patterns. Now they're printed at full size in there, so you don't need to enlarge the patterns at all in order to make your Luna from felt. If you're machine sewing, my recommendation would be that we increase the seam allowance slightly, and you probably only need a quarter of an inch in order to do that, but it just gives something for the machine stitches to hold on to, and I like to stuff my lunas quite, um, and friends quite tightly. So again, it just makes sure that none of those stitches are going to pop. But I just thought I'd run through that and let you know what you need to do in terms of material so you can get things ready, and there's going to be a series of videos with each bit cut down um, just so that you know how to do the arms, how to do the legs, how to attach the head onto the body, um, all of those kind of things hopefully you're going to find useful with these videos. Now in terms of fabric then for me obviously you can get your felt from Cool Crafting directly and I believe they also do um, quilting cottons and what have you so I've just got a selection from my stash at the moment. The lunas that I've made previously have actually been in this, this fabric here to have it a little bit further back to the light um, and this is a quilting weight cotton which is really nice um, and this is a linen texture by Macawa I think you pronounce it um, and that's really um, it's a lovely soft fabric it's got a really really nice texture there's no nap to it there's no fluff to it at all it's quite flat but the print has got like a slight mottling on it I don't know if the camera will pick up for you, but it's just got a slight mottling on it. That's worked very well. And obviously I've used a neutral one here. I um, can't think what this color was called, but it's just, a, you can choose the colors to, to suit whatever you want to do. Um, and then I've also got another one in this color as well, which I thought might be quite nice for, for, for the characters as well. And these were left over from, from a quilt I made. Um, so again, but quilting cotton is much better though, because it's got a really nice hand to it. So it feels very tactile. I do avoid anything with, um, I'm going to say with the polyester in, but then I'm going to contradict myself in a minute. Um, but with my quilting fabrics, then I always use 100% cotton. They've got longer threads of, of the cotton, which makes it a nice and strong and robust fabric as well for using. Um, and those as well, you can sponge dry quite easily. That's, that's no problem at all. The reason why I contradict myself about a polyester is because I have in my stash this fabric. Now this one is um, a man-made and it's actually a mock suede and I thought the texture might be quite nice. Now you can get the mock suede that have got a canvas back into it but that would be too stiff to use for, for, for Luna and her friends. This one is very much a what I would call a dressmaking fabric. It's got quite a nice crinkly hand to it. Now this will have something called a nap because it's a suede style so as you brush down you get one colour and if you brush it up, you'll get another feel. And, and quite often you can feel the difference from the way that the fabric is. Think of velvet. Velvet is a classic example or corduroy of a fabric that's got a nap to it. 
So with this one, um, it hasn't got a strong nap, but it's got that little bit of a texture to it, which I think could look quite fun as a bit of fur. Um, the backing of it is, is is soft, as I say, there's no no stiffness there, so that would be shown. And that's really quite it's robust as well. So that's going to be one of the lunars that I'm going to make. I'm possibly going to make two at the same time because I, I just want to have a go at doing that for, for time, but we'll see. Um, so, so that's the mock suede that I probably will use, but in all of the sew along it's going to be interchangeable with the fabrics there's no different way of doing things dependent on one you just need to bear in mind the nap so if there is a a certain feel for the fabric when you touch it quilt and cotton there's nothing at all that gives that anyway but on a velvet or on a um velvet might be a bit thick but like a velour or say um or a suede twine you might find that if you run your hand down one way you get one color and if you run your hand the other way so for example for two sides of luna's head you wouldn't want one to be one side and one the other so just make sure that when you're tracing your pattern out and you're cutting it out all of the direction of the nap lies the same way so you have north to south Decide what that's going to be before you start cutting out and start marking your fabric and then stick to that all the way through. OK, so that's that then. The other thing, the other one that I've got as well is I've got this um, linen as well, which is really quite nice. And I thought that might make a nice lunar, lunar colour as well or, or for a mouse colour. Again, bear in mind what clothing you want to put with it um, and how you want to be. For anybody who's watched the video for the kit on wrapping, I'm going to be doing the the um, ballet wrap so I've got to be careful of what tones I use against the pink to make sure that it complements it and it doesn't doesn't um, distort the colour at all so yeah so, so this is again is is another um, very very suitable fabric there's no stretch to it at all so it's not going to bulge when you try and poke any um, stuffing into the legs or the arms um, and you need something that's rigid because you don't want anything to so let me define rigid for you so you want a softness to your fabric so that it feels nice and tactile, but you don't want something that's so thick that when you try and sew it or they go through multiple layers, you're going to have problems. So the fabric still needs to be thin, but it needs to be robust, um, especially if you're thinking of passing your lunars to a child to play with, then you do need to take certain steps to make sure that they're as robust as possible. Um, so again, this linen is a really good robust, robust option as well. So those are all for the... Um, main body, the head, um, the body, the arms and the legs. But as we know from the design of Luna, let me find you a picture of her on here, I can probably see here on Wilhelmina, that there's actually a different fabric used for the pa feet pads and also inside the ears. So again, when you're choosing your, um, when you're choosing your fabrics for that as well, just bear in mind scale, because if I've got a pattern piece here for your foot pad, which I've traced and then put onto card. If you choose a pattern that is too big, you're going to struggle to get much of it into your into your foot pad. And that might be the look that you're going for, not a criticism at all. But just be mindful because at the end of it, you want to have the lunar that you're really proud of and you don't want to get to the end and think, mm, maybe I made a mistake with that. So offer your pattern pieces up against your fabric to see how much you're actually going to get in on that actual particular piece and bear in mind that some of this is going to be lost um, to a seam allowance as well. So for example, this is quite a, a very nice little pattern which will go nicely with the pink as we can see, but you won't get as much detail in as a pattern like this one say. So with that one, again it looked quite nice, but you're going to get much more detail of your pattern inside that because it's a much smaller print. So again, it's not criticism, anything will work um, and work well, but just be aware of how you're, not how you're, what fabrics you're choosing to make the inside. So I've got some suggestions here as well. So again, if we look at um, this pink against this linen, we can see that the pink stands out quite, quite prominently. And we might want something a little bit more subtle. So, for example, we might want a nice little gingham check like this, and that would work quite nicely. But again, be aware of how big that pattern is, because a smaller gingham is going to look more in proportion with your lunar than, um, or your lunar or friend than um, it is if you have um, a much larger check. Again, we've got another little pattern here. I've just pulled some of these out of my stashes. This is one I really like. And again, we can see we're going to get quite a lot of detail into that one, which is going to be really quite sweet. Um, 
I'm putting it, oh, and just, I'm not gender biased by any, by any stretch of the imagination. It's just that I know that I want my little girl, my little, my Luna to be a little girl or a Wilhelmina I want to make as well to be a little girl because I want to put the ballet wrap onto her in pink. So absolutely no, no gender bias here at all. It's, it's just, just trying to show you examples of what, of what we've got. Um, again, we've got another stronger colour here, so that would be quite a nice one. But again, it's going to be quite dominating in terms of the design and, and um, your Luna and, and how that's going to look. Um, again, we've got another one here that we could use. And I know that um, Sarah and the Cool Crafting team recommend the Luna, um, no, the Liberty prints because they have a very small, what they call a ditzy flower. So the more de detail you've got on and the more colours you fit in, you might find the more that colours that you can put, outfits you can put your Luna into. So again, it's just trying to choose those. Here's another little one that can look quite nice, little lilac one, that might look quite nice against here. But look how yellow that, that white actually goes against this mock suede now. So again, we're just trying to balance those colours. If I show you this gingham against here, you can see that's a really nice stretch, um, really nice match as well. So that would be really, really a, a good colour. Again, we want the facial features to stick out. So this is this is darker than you might choose. But again, the choice is yours. This is the whole thing with designing something for yourself. You can actually make these design choices. Um, also, you can use a, a flat colour. This is a very nice dusky pink that is actually a companion to... Where's the fabric on this one, I think? So those two go very nicely together. And, and I have seen floor, um, Luna's made in floral fabrics as well, and they look gorgeous too. Um, so again, that against the, the cream could look really quite nice. So it doesn't have to be a busy floral. Again, depending on what you're wanting to um, put together with your, with your fabric, um, for your design. Sorry, I'm thinking ahead of myself and getting carried away. But hopefully that just gives you a taste of the type of things. But just bear that scale in mind of your of your um, pattern that you're going to use for your um, feet and also for the inside of your ears because they you do want them to be proportionate to the overall character. The other thing that I want to talk about is the thread. The thread I'm going to be using is a moon thread. Um, it is an all-purpose polyester thread. I'm, I'm not a thread snob um i know that there's a lot of people who will say you should use a linen thread or a or a silk thread or a cotton thread and match it up with the type of fabric that you're using but for me i want these to be quite robust um toys so i do want to use i'm using an all-purpose polyester thread on that um and that's worked very well for me in the past and had no problem at all i use a neutral color um, and it fits in very nicely and I use the same thread in the bobbin and the um, top of my machine unless I'm doing the inside of an ear. So like on the long lunar ears, I'll change the colours just so that they match which side of the fabric I'm using. It'll all make sense when I, when I start to work through it. Um, and I also sometimes put an um, iron-on interfacing onto the um, inside of the fabric depending on how thin it is. With this um, mock suede, I'm not going to do that because that is very robust. Um, but on the quilting cotton, I did just add a little bit of extra body to it and, and that worked very well and kept it um, easier to sew with because it just adds a little bit of um, a body to it. So that's something to bear in mind. There was something else I was going to tell you about as well. Um, and my stuffing, I just use a polyester toy stuffing. So that's just a um, micro microfill type of thing which is um, really useful so you can get those from all different kinds of places um, so those are the kind of things that you need to, to have just to get together and um, oh, there was one thing I was gonna say um, needles sewing machine needles you don't have you can use whichever ones you've got but I do particularly like the Schmetz needles um, and I use a micro -tex. I'll use a 70 or an 80 depending on the thickness of my fabric, but usually quite often a 70 will, will suffice. Um, and you, you'll know if it's not right or not if it starts skipping stitches on your machine and, and your needle could be the first thing to do. So smetch needles are the ones that I do use daily. They are excellent. Um, moon thread I'll be using as well, or porpoise or purpose thread. Um, and as I say, then choose whichever fabrics you want and then you can join me and we'll get going on on what to make for our Luna and how to do the pattern. So have a great day and um, gather your supplies together and we'll get on with making our new friend.